crazy, but I didn't know he would. How did it run after that, Cat? It helped it. It didn't spin as much coming off the pond. Welcome to another high octane episode of Southern Dirt Motorsports. Folks, this session will be with uh, Ike Turner. Ike was uh, the mechanic on the 308 and the 309. There was really some real uniqueness about both of these cars. I will say, Ike was a forward thinker. He was a mechanic ahead of his time. He did some things that some other people hadn't thought of at the time. And, uh, I've been able to share some of those with him now, but there's no competition out there. He's been uh, good enough to share with me uh, some of his secrets. Back in the day, 95 to 98 percent of the race cars was powered by flathead forks. Ike chose to use a Hudson engine, and uh, they, were, they were Hudson Hornets, and most of them these came out of those engines themselves were way ahead of their time. And the Flock Brothers had great success out of them in super speedway wins. Hudson was a king of the track in the 50s. So Ike, if you will, tell me some of the uniqueness. Just tell me about the engine in this car. And by the way, folks, this is the 308 car that Charles Hullett drove. It's just like it was the last time it came off the racetrack. He tried to tear it up, but uh, <laughs> it was pretty tough. So it's still with us. The uh, 308 cubic inches, and of course we was allowed to Bore the cylinder 187 pounds, but this one wouldn't stand that. At 125, you'd get into the water jar. So anyway, we'd go as big as we could, and of course the uh, intake was had, it had twin H power at the beginning, and there's two little single barrel carburetors. So my brother, and I, I had two brothers that was deceased. Gene, my oldest brother, he was an engineer. He did, he was known as the pencil man. I knew a good one too. But anyway, I was the one that did most of the work, we say. But the uh, carburetors, I uh, modified the manifold and put two two barrels, Rochester carburetors. And then um, at the end, Everybody was, the competition was really, really tough. So we had to have the edge a little bit to be able to win. So we got us a blower and put on, and I thought it looked good, everything fine. And I was in the pit one day, and some lady come walking by, and she says, what is a generator in there? Look at that generator. Well, it's not a generator, it's a boiler. Of course, that blows the end, it blows the air into here. And my brother, he cut, we made this out here and bolted it to the carburetors. And so you get, we're putting air through the engine. And of course, uh, the power boost is way ahead. So that's just one of the things that's involved. Most of the guys not only didn't know what a blower was, or I guess I refer to them as a belt driven turbocharger because they've got turbines in them and uh, they didn't really know what they were. I guess they did look a lot like a big generator looking back at it. And um, what I did to the carburation system on them that impresses me, he doubled what it had to start with. And looking at it, it's not all that noticeable, especially if you don't know what you're looking for. So uh, I'll say again, Ike Turner was a mechanic thinking way ahead of his time and a good one. And, uh, he uh, had a lot to do with uh, the 309 over here. He had a lot of innovations to it, too. This supercharger is, is a McCulley, right? Yeah. It, and it come off of a Hudson motor or yeah, it come yeah. off a Studebaker? It come off in the salvage yard, but I don't remember what it was. Okay. It, it, it made it work here. I know Studebaker used a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hudson, yeah, the Hudson actually come from the factory with them at one point. Point not, not, not the blower, but the twin-inch. I know the yeah. 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 But I didn't know about the blower, no. it was actually yeah. a stock yeah. item on it or not. Well, this, this car, uh, guys and gals, is one of the few uh, time count symbols out there. This car is uh, exactly like it was the last day. It was on the track, I think, actually fresh a little, but uh, it really looks 
acts like it did the last time it was on the track. Another goal, these are individual points off the cylinder head, so uh, on the up and bar, so you have a six cylinder engine with six pilots, right. individual, individual pilots. Having been there, it didn't matter really how many other cars was out there, you could hear this one. It had a distinct sound that you could hear above anything else out there. I know a few guys were going a six-cylinder Chevrolet, but they didn't sound like this six-cylinder did. So it was a, it had a unique sound, it had unique power, and uh, I'd like say it was way, way ahead of the planted Fords. I, this, the 309 is a little bit different configuration than it was when it was raced. It's basically like it was, except that it had the Hudson engine, and it also, uh, you or somebody had decided to put the radiator in the rear of this car. And what brought that about? I've heard stories about it, but uh, you can verify the story or not. Chigger said something about that a while ago. He could not see over the radiator from the seat. So, my brother Billy, he probably just put the radiator in the rear, which they did. And of course, the top that goes from the radiator had to come up to the water tank. So, everything went good. As long as he was willing, the race stopped, and he had to, and he never had to stop the engine for any reason, then it wouldn't pick the water up and it would burn down and get hot. And so that was a disadvantage. Right. It worked good as long as everything was, was going. The race, he, he, he never had any problem with the engine. Well, did, uh, did you use an electric fan or anything on no, the radiator? Not, not the it, it just was the radiator. The radiator and it had the water pump on and the end. The air coming through the car. Well, the fan was back at the back. Oh, you did have a it fan back, back there. Back well, I, I never Because could. the radiator was in the rear. Okay, now, and we're fortunate enough, too, to not only have these two cars with us today, Ike's got some of the engines that would have been built for these two cars. And I'd get him to talk us through those a little and share a few things about those engines with us if we could. All these engines are engines that could be rebuilt and put in one of the cars. And all the machine work. And I will show you something that really bit unique in that. This is something back in the day the guys would never have guessed was happening. This piston is a Pontiac V8 engine piston and uh, all that required to, in this Hudson engine was to bore the block to fit this, which it would allow for the thickness of the wall and you could do that. And then your set of rings, you buy a set of rings, you get eight children. Well, after I bought three steps, I had a three set, three set, so that was good. And, uh, <laughs> that was just one of the things. That these were the racing pistons, and they worked real good. And I don't know whether people might have done it. And Hudson had ten rings, and they were good, but they were difficult to, to put in. Well, I said difficult, but a little time consuming. This is what just one of the things that we did. And these, uh, these engines like, were all flathead configurations, and these reliefs that was cut from the bows. Tell, tell us what that means. The air to flow through the the intake, you know, and the air was low better, so you had more active power. Uh, we spent a lot of time polishing and pointing and pulling. And I, I've noticed too, you've had a, two different head configurations. Yeah. Uh, one of them cast iron, one yeah. was a aluminum. Yeah, 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 but there's three, there's three different, two thirty-two, two sixty-two, and three oh eight. So that's aluminum head back there. Turn it around, boy. Oh, yeah, no. It's aluminum. That's all from three oh eight. The, the, the head interchange, we was running on that one now, we've got a 262 head. A 232, 262, and a 
three oh eight. Either one you want to do. Uh, how did you get started running the huts? Where did that come from? Well, uh, my brother Gene, he was a pistol, you know. So he figured out the torque and all that and the RPM. And, and, uh, uh, and this would be the most power to get the most driver power. When we first started, if you go to any junkyard and have the best cars, you can find a Hudson Hornet engine and transmission. And they was lovely to cheap. But after a while, guess what happened? Instead of one, I think BK Lee was one of the first ones. He got a Hudson. Then we had a Hudson. And then at the end, there was at least five or six teams that were running the Hudson in. And you go to, you need something, you go to the time jar, you're right, you can have it. I've got, I've got a few here and some more at the house. Right. Yeah. See, Ike's got the uh, uh, most number of basically complete engines, Hudson engines that I've seen in a long time. And you hardly ever even see that many flathead forwards in one place. And one other thing I asked you about, Ike, the crankshaft. What did you do with the crankshaft? Well, the clearance would have to be right off. Uh, not all cheap that Well, you can. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, the is we run these clearances right now. It was no secret. The car was. The machine work that we had done and the back angle. The standard oil parts and all the rocker heaters and all the stuff down. And all of the competitors we had our machine work done by us. And whenever I took something, everybody else knew what I had. So, uh, it, it was good, but the thing about it is that the currency had to be dry and spin about it and so we had it worked out. We had very little engine power. Well, uh, with that four and a half inch stroke, did you have to change rod bearings any more often in these yeah. that uh, you did other inches or did they stay pretty good? They, they stay good, but I've changed them real often. And how often was that? Well, about every two or three weeks, we set them up. They wouldn't be bad, but they did. You could see that they were kind of bad. They were bad. But they didn't be the same. Well, you know, it's kind of like the old days when you had to go to the store and buy a pair of shoes. Right. Well, that's the same thing. Well, you know, the old days when you had to go to the store and buy a pair of shoes. Right. Well, that's the same thing. Yeah, well, that's what most of them yeah. were. Did yeah. you ever run a hundred lap race with it? Not that I can remember. I know most of the championship races would be 50 laps and a lot of cars didn't make it through. But, yeah. 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 but that was the reason that we had to put an extra tank on the fuel because it wouldn't, the five gallon tank wouldn't last 50 laps. It would run out of gas and it had to be a now there's one other thing, you might not even want to share this with me, I'm going to ask you anyway. Uh, the camshafts here, what did, uh, where did you get the camshaft well, ground or did yeah, you? We, we had it ground, and uh, I'd have to look at the record, but Zickard, he was a big man in Texas, and he, he gave me the information that you needed, the, the power curve, and whatever you needed, but anyway, uh, we had a good one, we put it all back. But you did get an aftermarket yeah, cam. Yeah, uh, I, I had the one that could have the stop cam uh, Another unique thing, guys, about uh, Ike here. Ike is the only guy that I've seen since I've been doing this, since Mid Roy's been doing that has actually kept records of how much he won in certain maps. And he shared that with me, and uh, we're going to take some pictures of his book where I was paid down to the cents. Uh, I don't know if Ike remembers how that came about, and I didn't remember about it until after I had a conversation. Do you remember how that came about? Well, my wife, she, I don't know why, but she keeps up with the moon pretty well. Uh, a lot of us have that. You know, not, not probably, but anyway, <laughs> I said it before, you paid off your one dollar bill, and I I guess the, girl at the uh, racetrack, they just got down first heat worth ten dollars or whatever it was. So uh, you got the envelopes and 
you got to start the end, you know, you can count how much money you got. Sure. I, I, you will probably remember this. It one, uh, the, the purse was based on the track usually kept 50% of the purse and the other 50% was split up among the, the different uh, races. And uh, every track promoter got accused of not putting the full half out there. So uh, if that was happening at McMillan, being at Cancro then, he told me this story is now. Uh, he started paying down uh, to the cents. He would add a few cents to everybody's payoff. You might get twenty dollars and thirty cents, but that was Peanut's way of showing that he was giving his full fifty percent of the gate. And uh, I guess a lot of folks never knew uh, what the purse was based on. But back in the day, that's what the purse was actually based on. We might have got crook for it sometimes. I don't know. We, we, we feel like if we was competitive and if we won our part, uh, I'm not saying that we win everything, but Charles was very competitive on the track and he was very you know, reliable. reliable. Uh, once in a while, you might have uh, something that could be uh, out of the ordinary, but normally, if it was a 25 lap feature, We'd be there at the end. Fifty lap feature, we'd be there. So that's uh -huh. just the way it is. I've just picked up one of the timing chains from well, the cars here. Yeah, you know, like, I'll be careful. <laughs> you compare this with what's in cars today, and they're about they're less than half of the width that things are today. They built some things really good back then in the 308 and 309. Both they were super reliable cars. They were usually around at the end of the race with people like Mike that caused that. Uh, before we get through with this, I'm going to ask Ike to do one more unique thing for us. And I want to say one more time, this is the garage these cars were raced in. This is the actual engines that were gone into them. And we've had both uh, drivers, Charles and Chigger, here today. And we've even had old Frank Turner here today. Happiness along with this, Frank was all the way around. Well, he won the race one time, and he talked about that ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and, we'll never, and we'll never let him forget. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm going to ask you if you will, and I know it will do it, to start that 308. And this is one of the few cars that was used back in the 60s that you can actually walk up and start the thing. I've just got to let you hear it run just a few minutes. And, uh, it gives me goose pimples to think about it and to hear it run, but I'll ask I to walk over there to read and start it for just a few minutes. Long time. 